As a diehard Democrat, a longtime bedwetting liberal, I saw hope. I saw promise. I saw a chance. Give Polly a chance. Give Polly a chance. That debate night, Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. And boy, did she give a great performance. Did she uh, hold her own and even, and even rattled Trump. And where I uh, was not a, a Kamala Harris fan at the beginning was one that night where I, where I honestly said she won. She won. She did a fantastic job as far as performance. Now, in this video, we're talking about the tales of two different Kamalas. By now, you have seen uh, snippets from the debate. But by now, you know about her first sit-down one-on-one interview. And by now, you know that one that inspired me to maybe, perhaps, give the Dems a chance this fall. The other Kamala? So, it's very simple what we're going to do. We are going to talk about this interview that she did in Philadelphia, local uh, reporter. And I am going to give you my um, insight to it in regards to as to someone who has been a performer, theater, all that good stuff, and what I see. Because boy, was that debate great theater. But now, this other Kamala, this is real. Okay, let's go to right now, Action News exclusive. We're going to watch some of this. We're sitting here in a state and arguably in front of an audience that 54 days from now could decide Swing the state outcome of this presidential election. Yeah. You hear it more than I do. People want to know more about you and about your specific plans. Okay. At the debate the other night, you talked about creating an opportunity economy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can drill down on that a little bit. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, yeah. what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle-class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people. You know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same mm. experience. You know, if, if but a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn. You know? Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Because this is what we call reaching. Reaching you're 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 given a goal. You're given a, an objective. You're given a you're given a question here. But let's just say, in acting class and acting a lesson, you're given a goal. I want you to convince the other person that you're the best for the job. But you're going about it through unrealistic means. You're reaching, right? And it's not convincing. Here, this question is very simple. Day one, how are you going to make things cheaper for us? Because it hasn't been good. And I'm going to be real nice and forget the fact that you've been in power with Biden for the last three and a half years. How would you, the Harris administration, how would you lower prices for us? Because times are tough. Now, if this candidate who's running for the highest office in the land, free leader, uh, leader of the free world, had any bullet points, you just rock them right there. Here, she goes into a soliloquy of her past. When we've heard this before, we heard it at the debate. We've heard it at her campaign trails, at her rallies. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. This is where you get to connect to, and in this case, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania voters. Now, you're trying to tell a relatable story, but then you're saying it's not relatable, but it can be. I'm sure it is. Uh, we believed uh, I had neighbors that liked their lawn. I mean, what neighbor doesn't like a lawn? Uh, I have a lawn. 
I, we're very proud of, of every inch that we have and we take care of it. We, we put a lot of work into where we live. Pride and joy. Absolutely. But everything's expensive right now. So how can you make this? This is not a good beginning, guys. And, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that again, what does it have to do? What does it have to do with the question? We get that. We're all if we're all raised decent and we're all we all we all raised with we want to treat each other with respect and dignity. It's as if she is showing up to a uh, high school student body debate and hasn't prepared. She's absolutely not prepared. This is just mind blowing. We as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams, wow. but not everyone necessarily has access to the resources that can help them fuel those dreams and ambitions. So when I talk about building an opportunity economy, it is very much with the mind of investing in the ambitions and aspirations and the, and the incredible work ethic of the American people and creating opportunity for people, for example, to start a small business. Um, my mother, my mother you, know, you know, worked long hours and... and our okay, I'm going to stop again. Here's where I, I, I have a lot of problems with her administration, with this. This is all platitudes. This is all dreams. This is all fantasy. This is all uh, emotional, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, just... Uh... <laughs> it's It's emotional soliloquizing okay come on let's start with the fact that you're that this administration went after small businesses who were making over 600 bucks off their venmo off their off their cash apps with their small businesses because those are the ways of how uh, people deal with business now it used to be a lot more and not only did they do that with the IRS, they hired more IRS to go after small businesses. This is not the, the reality. This is a fantasy of what you're talking about. So let's just cut it right now. Say, oh, day one, you know what? We're not going to go after anyone with 600 bucks. It'll go back up to what it previously was because small businesses need a break. And then, you know, she can even take some of, uh, take some of the load off of her. It's like, you know what? Coming out of the pandemic, this just wasn't this isn't just this just wasn't the right thing to do. And now we're gonna change it. Let me tell you, if she said that right away, my ears would have perked. Everyone's ears would have perked because that's realistic. Because nowadays small businesses are dealing with Venmo, Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, all those means. That's how everyone so. She's talking about a, a was it a, a, an opportunity, a, a economy that it's already exists. But you went after us. And you're trying to soliloquize this into, uh, you know, a fabled uh, American dream that, you know, we're we're not able to reach. We've, we're reaching. We're doing it every day. You're you have been making it impossible for us. So this is. Becoming a disaster, guys. This is another Kamala. This is another person different than what I saw and heard in every facet from the debate. And it makes me believe that that debate, the more and more that I move away from it and see this stuff like this, it was completely scripted, rehearsed, scripted answers to the bone. And even her, her going after uh, Trump, those were rehearsed because we knew you know how to get under his you know how to get to his ego talk about his rally size etc cetera, etc cetera. that was not a good moment for trump let's go on for helped raise us we used to call her it was i still call her our second mother she was a small business owner i love our small business owners i learned who they are from my childhood and she was 
a, a community leader, she hired locally, she mentored. Our small businesses are so much a part of the fabric of our community, so, not to mention, really, I think the backbone If I was this reporter, so my opportunity, I'm like, economy, she's not answering my questions. I'm going to follow up. Startups, I'm going to follow up. I'm going to get my moment to follow up. Let's see if she does that. To start their small business. Let's see if he does that. $5,000. Nobody can start a small business with $5,000. But investing in people's innovative ideas and giving them the ability to go for it. Um, opportunity economy. Okay, so really fast, uh, like I said, you know, I'm waiting for him to, 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 re to reply and follow up. She's talking about small businesses, right? giving them more money than than less as far as bigger loans. The problem is, is most businesses for the first three to five years don't make a cent. Don't make a profit. Some, most of them at the, the first three years fail. So we're going to give them more money? Where Where's all this money coming from? Because you're sending it to everywhere else that, that you know, as far as other countries, then where it needs to be with small business owners, with citizens. Where is this money going to come from? Absolutely incredible. Means, look, we don't have enough housing in America. We have a housing supply shortage. And what that means, in particular for so many younger Americans, the American dream is elusive. It's just actually not attainable. This answer is elusive. So part of my plan is to work with the private sector and housing developers to give them a tax credit. To be able a tax to credit to housing developers. It's not going to work. Build, and my goal is 3 million new homes by the end of my first term. In addition, to help people who just want to get their foot in the door, literally. Okay. And so giving first time home buyers a $25,000. No, 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 no. We're talking about, we're talking about helping us now. We're in homes. We're, 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 we're doing this. We're doing that. What you're saying is get a home and I'll make it cheap for you to get a home. But once you get a home, you're going to have to pay more bills. You're going to have to incur more debt. Absolutely. To just get in the guys. door and then they will do the work that they need to do to save and to pay that mortgage and to build wealth for themselves and mm. their family. These are some examples of what I mean when I talk about an opportunity economy, and a lot of it has to do with just the community I was raised in and the people that I, you know, I admired who work hard, you know, and deserve to have, you know, their dreams fulfilled because they're prepared to work for it. You talk at the debate and at previous appearances about turning the page. He's not following up on the past. And he fact, didn't follow up. Johnstown, you're talking about a new way forward. Yeah. I think new way some forward. people have a question given maybe your current role as vice president of the united states how different you are from joe biden and so i wonder if there are okay. one or two spots policy areas or approaches where you would say i'm a different person well i'm obviously not joe biden and um <laughs> you know i i offer a new generation of leadership and uh. so for example thinking about developing and and creating an opportunity economy where it's about investing in areas that really need a lot of work and maybe focusing on again the aspirations and the dreams but also just recognizing that at this moment in time some of the stuff we could take for granted years ago we can't take for granted anymore. what is she talking about um, for example another um, plan that i have that is a new approach is to expand the child tax credit this is absolutely Okay, how are you different than your predecessor? Who was your boss? Who was the president? Well, I'm not him. Ha, 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 ha. Then she repeated the answer from before, which was not the answer that he asked the question. Was not the answer to that question. Opportunity of wealth, economy of opportunity. I, I, confusing platitudes. How am I different? Well, here's how, here's how I'm different. Uh, you know, go to your strengths. You're talking about a child's tax credit. Go to your strength. This is what I did when I was a prosecutor. This is what I did in California. This is what I would like to do. 
this is one of the good things we did while I was uh, um, a vice president. We were able to get four point over four billion dollars in in a, in um, uh, in businesses to help Latin America out, so we can uh, root out uh, the reasons why people uh, immigrate here illegally. So I want to take that and dig further. To, I want to go. I want to go further with that. Further with uh, you know. Uh, uh, the economies being stronger over there, so there's not many so many problems here, and there's not a, a burden on our taxpayers with that. Go there. I saw the list of companies that she's worked that she got as far as that over four billion dollars. Where's that money going to? Well, apparently it's gone to different companies in Latin America, and hopefully that they're hiring people. But that's a whole different topic. But she can say that, but. That that is a a a, a uh, she could put that that feather in her hat. That is hers. That is an accomplishment. But I, this I don't know what this answer is. I do not know. Do not know. Thousand dollars for young families for the first year of their child's life, because that is obviously a very critical stage of development of a child, and a lot of young parents need the help to buy a car seat or a crib or clothes for their kids, and so. My that six grand is gone in two weeks, max. Plus, you want to put them in a house where you give them twenty five grand, but they're you, you know the whatever their mortgage is and, and their payments. You know, it, none of this is realistic. None of it. None of this makes sense. Makes sense. And again, just just what have you done? This is how I'm different. Approach is about new ideas, new policies. It's always that about are new ideas, new policies. The current moment and also to be very honest with you my focus is very much in what we need to do over the next 10 20 years to catch up to the 21st century around again capacity but also challenges crime and public safety are two <laughs> major issues uh right at the forefront of voters minds in philadelphia as well uh, crime is a significant issue wow when we talk about crime the conversation turns to gun safety as mm. well. And I think you actually probably caught a lot of people this off. This is the last one we're going to do, Maybe a bit by surprise in the debate the other night when you mentioned that you are a gun owner. I know you said it in 2019 as well. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about your values on this yeah. issue. When it comes to gun ownership, where do you draw the line in America on gun ownership and gun use? Well, like you said, Brian, I am a gun owner. And Tim Walls, my running mate, is also a gun owner. We're not taking anybody's guns away. I support the Second Amendment, and I support reasonable gun safety laws. Part of my approach to this is I was... So there is a litany of gun safety laws in different, in different states, from the heaviest to the lightest. What I would do is, okay, you know, I'm a gun owner, proud of it. Here's where gun safety uh, and gun control works. Here's this state. Here's this example. Example, example, example. That's it. But the problem is, even the highest regulated, the highest, uh, the most uh, gun controlled states still have problems. But that's a whole different, a different discussion. Um, there's also, too, this whole issue is, is, is she really behind the Second Amendment? Right. There's a lot of people that don't that, that don't think I don't know. I don't know why to me this is her this is a weak link for her as is abortion is for Trump. I just don't believe it. I just don't believe Trump in, in when he's talking about abortion. That's just me. I believe her women's rights absolutely. A career prosecutor for most of my career. I have personally prosecuted homicide cases. I have personally looked at autopsies. Mm -hmm. I have personally seen what assault weapons do to the human body. And so I feel very strongly that it is consistent with the Second Amendment and your right to own a gun to also say, we need an assault weapons ban. They're literally tools of war. They were literally designed to kill a lot of human beings quickly. Mm. I say we need universal background checks. The majority of NRA members support that. Why? Because it's just reasonable. You just might want to know before someone can buy a lethal weapon 
if they've been found by a court to be a danger to themselves or others? You just might want to know. Two final questions, if I might. Sure. On the appeal of the man you were running against. Okay. I'm going to leave this link in the video box description, top of the video box description. There is uh, about another four, three, 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 four minutes left. I can tell you the tale of two Kamala's is very, very, it's very clear. This Kamala, she's very confused. She looks very lost and it looks like she's reaching for answers. And usually when you do that, when you're, when you're, when you're, you know, talking from the hip, your first kind of just talking to talk until like, oh, there it is. I got it. But then you have to think, okay, well, what am I saying right now? So I can make sure I don't sound like, because what I really wanted is, wait, you know what? Forget what I just said. Here's what I meant to say. Of course, you can't say that. That's the camera that I'm seeing here. Now, this is, a lot of people have a hard time with one-on-ones. I get it. But unfortunately, this is part of the whole thing of being our president. How do you connect to your to your audience, the voters? And how can we get to know the real you? What I see here is just a person that's incredibly uncomfortable and has anxiety, uh, even in, in, in the way she's sitting, not relaxed, because there's a certain element of this where it's not scripted. And finally, guys, not once, not once at all, is there a follow-up that this gentleman does. Where are our journalists? This is just ridiculous. Because all you had to say was, that sounds great, but can you give me an example of how you would make this, uh, of how you would lessen the load day one? Can you give me an example of, uh, a, in realistic terms, what your economy plan is. Can you give me an example of what you would like to do uh, in regards to uh, violence in general in America? Because it went up, it went up during your during your tenure. So this is uh this is absolutely insane, guys. I was very disappointed. When I first saw this, uh, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, uh, especially coming out of that debate. Really is the tale of two different Kamalas. Now I want to know what you guys think. Let us know right now. Uh, just be honest. Give us your comments and I will reply. You know I will because that's what we do here on the channel. So muchísimas gracias. Make sure you are subscribed and wherever you're at, keep your slam fuerte. Gracias.